score uh, is an empirically derived predictor of a consumer's creditworthiness. Uh, it is derived from past uh, payment behavior, uh, generally contributed by financial institutions to a, a centralized uh, credit bureau. So it's vital to consumers so they can actually engage in the financial sector. It gives them more financial flexibility, the ability to plan more effectively, uh, and improve their lives. And one of the things that we're seeing uh, increasingly around the world is the use of different types of data to bear on someone's creditworthiness and to be included in a credit score. And that further expands the number of consumers that can have access to credit. Uh, historically, consumer underwriting uh, was done judgmentally, um, and that was uh, based upon human judgments. I mean, sure, banks had policy, uh, but individuals apply policy, uh, policy differently. By using credit scoring, it, it brings a, an empirical process into the credit underwriting, credit uh, underwriting framework, uh, and that ensures that uh, policy and procedures are uh, applied more fairly. Uh, so that means that uh, the discrimination is reduced um, and also gives greater control to the bank in terms of their risk tolerance. So effectively you end up granting uh, credit more fairly, which is good for society, and credit more soundly, which is good for the banks. Uh, in China, there's a large number of underbanked consumers. So these are consumers that don't have access to credit, uh, since much of the credit underwriting is based upon past uh, credit behavior, they're effectively excluded from the financial sector. Uh, so what we're seeing in China and what we're trying to promote with our technology, linking and analytics, uh, is to use alternative data to assess the creditworthiness of more people. And in China, that what that means is anywhere from 250 million to 500 million more consumers could have access to credit. That's larger than the entire adult population of the United States. Yeah, and it would come back to uh, the concept of alternative data. Leveraging more data uh, allows a better risk assessment of everyone and allows the ability to evaluate more individuals for creditworthiness. Uh, so I think that's one of the big trends that we that we uh, that we hear of is alternative data. Uh, it's you know it's including more people in the financial system. So financial inclusion. So that's going to be a continuing trend. Uh, not only for granting more credit and credit scoring, but also in preventing um, you know, economic crime, fraud. Uh, again, you need the same type of data uh, to be able to protect the bank, uh, the society, and consumers against fraud. We, we know every day there's another uh, potential data breach or fraud scheme. And so uh, alternative data can be used not only for credit risk assessment, uh, also to prevent financial crime, and the most uh, exciting marketplace uh, right now is Asia, and in particular, China. It, it's really uh, key to uh, provide precision in credit uh, assessment. So a, uh, a credit score uh, is an empirically derived predictor of future credit performance. Uh, when it's uh, used in terms of uh, used on past credit, uh, credit history data, and when it's used with alternative data, that can provide a very robust perspective on a consumer. Uh, by using empirical methods, uh, the bank is able to uh, predict the future credit with this with greater precision. Uh, it allows a more consistent application of policy, uh, and so it's uh, better from a planning perspective, from a uh, credit policy perspective. Uh, it, it's proven through, you know, really in all economies, uh, to be a fundamental um, advancement that uh, really benefits both society uh, and the banks as a whole.